Good evening. My name is Karen Wall, but you can call me Auntie Karen. Welcome back to another episode of Reading to the 246, a space where children of all ages, including us adults, can learn facts about Barbados, islands across the region, and the world. Today is National Scribble Day, and on this day, we encourage children to show kindness through scribbling. Now, I love to doodle or scribble. And one of the times I doodle or scribble is when I travel. Which brings me to this evening's guest. 246 readers, please welcome Carolyn Lawrence and her son, Brett. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Auntie Karen, for having us. Um, I'm Carolyn Lawrence from Dominica, and this is my son. Hello, I am Brett. <laughs> 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 Good. Have you ever thought about putting the islands of the Caribbean in alphabetical order and then booking a plane ticket to visit these islands? When Carlin Lawrence not only came up with said idea, but decided to share the experience with her son, Brett. She then went a step further and decided to share that experience by writing a book entitled Caribbean ABC. She then plays second in the Caribbean Children's Book Competition, writing about what most of us dream about doing with our children. Now, Carolyn is from the island of Dominica. She currently resides in New York with her husband and son. She loves traveling the Caribbean and other parts of the world with her family. She also loves dancing, and especially to her native Dominican bouillon rhythm and doing fun activities with her son, Brett. Welcome again, Carolyn. Tell us a little more about the background behind your book and how the pandemic served as part of the impetus in you in your completing your book. Yes, thanks again. Um, that was a lovely introduction. <laughs> yes, so um, I began writing the book when my son was you know, just about one year um, old and, uh, and I decided that I wanted to do something to showcase the Caribbean. So. I started writing the letters of the alphabet and, you know, words that meant something that could capture the essence of um, the Caribbean. Um, but it wasn't until the pandemic started and I had more free time that I said, you know what, why don't I, you know, I actually finish this book? And even my husband was like, yeah, you should finish it. I've heard you talk about it over the years. And at that point, Brett and I had traveled um, and even my, my husband, Brett and I, we had traveled over the Caribbean. So we had a new um perspective you know um when I started writing we hadn't traveled so much Brett was a brand new um baby so it wasn't really it really didn't captivate the the essence of what I wanted to um do so then once I was in quarantine in Dominica a lot of free time in quarantine for those of us who have been through it I decided to finally finally um you know finish it up and then I also got motivated by this um, writers competition um so that's how it came to be about seven years later that's when um I finished um, the book. Nice. Before we get into the book, tell us about the illustrations. Yes. So the book was illustrated by a teenager who um, lives in Dominica and is the son of my um, friend who is a photographer and graphic designer. So she gave it to him as a project for himself to see what would what would I like you know what could how can I captivate capture this 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 book talking about the Caribbean and different aspects of Caribbean culture, history, food, dance, everything. So he, um, and his name is Manuel Olmos. And so Manuel asked me for a few photos of Brett. Um, so Brett was eight at that time and I sent the photos. And um, eight, nine, yes. And then I sent the photos. And then when I saw the drafts, I was blown away. He really did, um, you know, showcase like Brett's adventurous spirit, his playfulness, his charm. His fun, you know, little self. So, so that was, I was pretty um, satisfied with the, with the product. And I was pretty impressed as well. So that's why I said I really had to really pull out the illustration because it was like actually seeing Brett on the pages of the, of the book, him um, scuba diving, that really grabbed me. Now, when we come back after the break, we're going to go into Miss Lawrence and Brett reading Caribbean ABC. Now, over to you, Caroline and Brett. 
All right, thank you. So Caribbean ABCs, yes, this is my book, illustrated by Manuel Olmos. And um, this book is dedicated in memory of my mom and Gert Grammy. Um, she passed away a few years ago. Um, she was an awesome storyteller and a comedian as well. So whenever you know we, we, we pull up, pull it up, we think about her. And um, yeah, you want to say anything about the cover of the book? Um. Okay. So first of all, <laughs> that woman and that man are not my parents. <laughs> yeah, everybody's asking, are they your parents? Not, no, it's just illustration. The only person really represented is Brett. But you know, second of all. That is not my uncle. <laughs> and the rasta at the back is not your uncle? Third of all, I think the detail looks nice, especially with that iguana right here. Yeah. Right there. Yes, the illustration is amazing. So we're going to read a little bit and take you on a little bit of a tour throughout the Caribbean. So we're going to start with A. The Atlantic Ocean is the second largest ocean in the world. The Atlantic Ocean splashes on the eastern side of many of the islands and territories in the Caribbean. I love seeing those huge crashing waves. Show you a little bit. Mr. Brett Smile on the peninsula. And this is actually a, a place in Dominica called Scotshead, where one side is the Atlantic Ocean and the other side is the Caribbean Sea. All right. You okay? You see? No. All right. B, Boiling Lake. The Boiling Lake is located in Dominica. It is one of the biggest in the world. It actually boils like hot water. Ouch. Yep. And then, um, the other B. Okay. You want to do this? You want to start? One of the main features of the Caribbean is its beaches. Beaches are my favorite things. They are my favorite things too. I love the beach. Some of the best beaches in the world are found here. Some have white sand. Some have black sand. Some have rocks, some display beautiful reefs, and have some of the most beautiful fish and other animals and corals in the world. The island of Antigua has 365 beaches. So we've, we've not really been to Antigua. We did a, a quick transit for Antigua once. And I'm, I'm a little bit lazy. I haven't climbed to see the boiling lake yet. I know that's a big shame. <laughs> All right, and see, carnival. Carnival began as a strict celebration of the freed and enslaved people, and to this day, it is one of the highlights of life in the Caribbean, with people dancing all day and night in the streets during certain times of the year. Trinidad is known as the capital of carnival in the Caribbean. I have taken part in three carnivals, and I love dancing in the streets. Yes. So now that the carnivals are coming back, you know, maybe you increase from three to four or five. All right, dancing B. Speaking of dancing, let's do dancing D. Dancing is an important part of life in the Caribbean. You can find fun dances such as merengue and salsa in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Want to try a dance, Bertie? Left leg forward, right leg forward, move your waist. There you go. Hey. I see you have a little rhythm. <laughs> okay. All right. E. This is serious stuff now. This is ecotourism. It is one type of tourism that promotes the natural resources of a Caribbean country to its visitors. These include the beautiful black or white sand beaches that we mentioned earlier, the natural water springs, rivers, lush green mountains, um, and so much more. Belize and Dominica are well known as ecotourism destinations. Yay for nature. I was supposed to. Oh, I took your line, Bertie. I'm sorry. Yay for nature. Yay. <laughs> and then F, and I think you're going to like this one, Karen. We have an abundance of fish in the Caribbean, such as the flying fish. <laughs> they really seem to fly. They really do seem to fly. Um, so the flying fish from Barbados, they are very exciting to watch and very tasty to eat. Really? Very tasty. E and the F. My camera is a little wonky. Right. That one, that's because for some reason it's because the camera doesn't count, but if it's, it goes to the app. Okay, Mr. Tech Guy. G. I play tech guava. All the time. guava is a refreshing fruit found throughout the islands. It is used to make jams and fresh local juice. 
Guavas can easily be picked from trees that grow on the side of the streets. Yum. Yum. All right, another serious topic, hurricanes. Hurricanes are storms which appear throughout the Caribbean during the months of June to November. Uh oh These storms cause a lot of heavy rainfall and strong winds, which can sometimes damage houses and crops on the island. Fortunately, houses in the Caribbean can be built to withstand the effects of the storm. And Caribbean people are usually well prepared to deal with hurricanes because they listen to the weather reports, stock up on foods, supplies, and help each other to protect their homes. Brett has never experienced a hurricane directly, but we visited Dominica after the last major hurricane, and um, it was an experience, and um, we handled it really well, um, so I have to say, yeah. All right, I, iguanas. Iguanas are larger lizards found throughout most of the Caribbean islands. On certain Caribbean countries, the iguanas are highly protected, oh, and some yeah. others see them as pests, and in other countries, they are local delicacy. I like to chase iguanas, mama. You forgot to say. It's okay, it's okay. So we can do one more. Okay, let's do jelly. Okay, let's do J. Okay, after this, we'll stop. Okay, jelly is the fruit of the coconut tree. Some refer to the flesh, the jiggly part, from the coconut as jelly. Others refer to the entire fruit. It is a yummy and refreshing snack, especially on a hot day. Now we'll stop. Yeah, take a, so this is just a little snippet from Caribbean ABCs, which is our new book. Um, yes, that's uh, available throughout some Caribbean islands and online as well. Thank you so much, Caroline and Brett. And on that note, I have some coconut water today. I didn't have the jelly, but I had some coconut water. And from your expression, I could see that you probably wanted some of that cool, refreshing drink as well. I do. I'm gonna go get some. We don't have any. Sorry. Yes, we did. Yes, we have coconut water. Yes, we did. All right. That's it for oh, story time. Kiss. Um, thank you. That's it for story time. Now I have visited a couple of Caribbean destinations, but I love how you were able to make it fun and educational and a family affair. Tell us about that. Yes, um, whenever we travel um, as a family, or sometimes it's just Brett and, and I um, are traveling to throughout the Caribbean and different parts of the world, um, I always try to make it fun. And especially before I go, I do some research to find out what kids' activities um, that we could participate in. So when we went to St. Martin, we did the butterfly farm. Um, when we went to Cayman Islands, what did you like in Cayman Islands? Them structures, the, uh, the, the sculptures. Uh, yeah, and then you like yeah, you like the, the cat. cats were very friendly, and whenever they just saw someone, they just walked over and just <laughs> and cuddled. Like, yes, that was in Bermuda. Yes, that wait, was that was Bermuda. That was Sorry. Bermuda. But okay. once it was a kid, they just walked on my laps. Yeah, he loves kitties. He just got a new cat too, so he's very excited. No Yo, need, Charlie, yeah. come over here. No need to bring Charlie. Here. Charlie, come <laughs> over. <laughs> Yes, it, yeah. So yeah, so we always look for fun stuff. Of course, we as my husband and I also need some adult moments. So sometimes it means hiring a babysitter or putting him in some kids' activities. But generally, we try to incorporate um, Brett in as many activities when we travel, um, be it within the United States, within the Caribbean, or the wider world. So we try to make it as fun as possible. Right. I know you have a website called www.caribbeanabc.com. But what other ways can persons gain access to your book? All right. So, yes. So the website is www.caribbean-abc.com. Please visit. Um, there's links to um, my Amazon um, um, link for purchasing the book. And we are available on Prime. So if you order it today, you get it tomorrow or latest two days. Um, so that's, that's really um, good. And you can get it in France, England, you know, wherever Amazon is um, available for, for you. Um, in the Caribbean, I'm proud and very happy to say that in Barbados, we are at Bay's Bookstore in Bridgetown. In Dominica, my native land, it's at Jay's Bookstore in Roseau. And oh. in Antigua, you can find it at Best of Books Bookstore in St. John's. Um, so we are trying our best to get it in different and various Caribbean islands, um, to make it as easy as possible to access um, for those um, young people who would like to read. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, children, can you state the name of one of the islands Brett visited? You can either type it in the chat or you can raise your hand so that you can come in to say it um, on the live. I'm just checking to see here. Trinidad and Tobago. Ooh, lovely. Who's that? Amelia. Nice, Amelia. I definitely have to give you a prize. I realize that you have been, you answered the question last week. And you also answered the question this week. Mackenzie and Michaela. Fruit. I mean, grapes. Sorry? In Barbados. Grapes yeah, see, in Barbados. You see grapes in Barbados. So what activity did Brett engage in that stood out the most to you? If you're looking at the pictures, one of the things that he said that stood out the most to you. Let's see if my readers are paying attention. I the know carnival. He, yes, the carnival. Yes. And Brett, you did better than me because I only I've only jumped in carnival here in Barbados. I've never had the opportunity to participate in a carnival overseas. Probably now the pandemic is over. God permitting, I will get the opportunity to do that. Good. Now, Caroline and Brett, how many destinations have you all visited? And are there any plans to visit more destinations? Well, definitely. When we did the book, not all the destinations that we mentioned in the book that Brett has visited. For example, as I said, we've never been to Antigua, except for like a few hours. Um, we've never been to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so these are this for serves as a motivation. So Brett has been to over 10 um, countries. Um, we've also haven't gone to Barbados for... Like overnight, right? Like overnight. Yeah, I've been to Barbados overnight, but he always we transit. But whenever we transit, he, he loves you know he loves the chefettes, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you do right. You love the chefettes food every time you stop. I have so many photos of you eating at chefettes. <laughs> I just gave you the look, the look, yeah, but it's true with the smile. Ah, no, I saw that. So yes, so we definitely, <laughs> we definitely um want to visit um uh, a few other countries. Um, Jamaica is on the list. Um, oh. Especially my husband, he really is into the Rastafarian and the reggae. So I think that would be a real treat for him to to go visit the museum, the Bob Marley Museum, the Peter Tosh Museum, and do all some of the, the activities that you know, and get the real aki and saltfish. Um, and these are the things we like to do. We like to really get into the, the 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 life and go to visit the local restaurants rather than just eating on the resort or eating at the hotel. Um, mingling with the locals, going to the local spots where the locals like you know that's that's when you really feel the the vibes. You yes. Just stay in the hotel. It's nice, of course, to stay in the hotel and relax, but to mingle with the locals, that's when you you really feel the the vibration. When you get immersed in the culture, and somehow, no matter where you go in the Caribbean, like you say, even you as you were saying, talking, we were talking before the show started, and you were saying that where you are, there's so many Caribbean people around. And, you know, it just feel, builds that sense of community. And one of the things I like about what I'm doing here now is I get to meet people from different parts of the Caribbean who are sharing their stories through, through books and building literacy in a fun and interactive way. And on that note, any plans to write any future books? <laughs> that's a lot of pressure <laughs> for me I just I should right I know I should every, I, a few people have told me I think the same day I, I published the book uh, you know one of Brett's friends was like are you going to write a book about with me as the men's character this time like, <laughs> I would love to but I'm still you know just getting into this um, trying to enjoy it because it took so many years of you know what it, it was a process it, it, it seems easy and that's not to tell anyone um, not to follow their dreams. Always follow your dreams, but it was a, it was tough, especially in the end with all the editing and um and getting it um self published and getting the ad just right. It was um very 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 um you know it was it was a little challenging I have to say. So right now I just want to enjoy a little bit and then um hopefully um let's see where you know maybe next year takes us. Yes, 
Exactly. Like you have a mini chair. You have your mini chair leader there cheering you on, and and like I can hear you saying, "How do you get it that way?" Yes, yes. My he motivates me. Yes, yes, he motivates me a lot. So oh. yeah. Right, when we come back, it's time for a Bajan mashup. Okay, we're back. Question number one. What was Brett's and your favorite place of interest when you visited Barbados? You know, you said you passed through in transit, but if you got a chance. Um, what was your favorite place of interest or where would you like to visit if you had the opportunity to visit Barbados? I mean, my favorite place in Barbados would have to be that beach right in front of Amaradis Hotel, which is the Kalai, Kalai Bay, right? Is it the Kalai Bay? Yes, 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 yes. I love that beach. I love the sand. I love the sea. I love the fact that I can get a cutter right on the beach. I can get a rum punch right on the beach. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I do. Um, I love visiting the Harrison's Cave, of course, and I can't wait oh. to go for it. Um, I did that and it was really amazing. And I did it. I remember that trip I did it on my own. It was a good, you know, solo trip and I enjoyed it. Um, oh I got to enjoy a little bit of soca on the hill because I, I came nice. just over and that was really fun. And the vibes was, I mean, amazing. Um, so there's, you know, Bridge Tongue, walking through Bridge Tongue. And the last time I, I walked through Bridge Tongue, some young men were selling this green mango juice. And I love oh. green mangoes, but I never had a green mango juice. And oh my gosh, oh my gosh, blown away. I mean, I'm still dreaming about coming back. And um, the places in Oystins, Pat's Place, for example, I dream about the, the grilled fish and the grilled potatoes. Oh my gosh. So I just love Barbados. I love so many aspects of Barbados. And I'm looking I'm forward to discovering, you know, more maybe of the, the East Coast, the North, North Coast, you know, take mm -hmm. a drive, a leisurely drive. I follow, visit Barbados on Instagram and I see so many nice. restaurants that I need to try. It was right on the beach, like tides. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, to experience the, um, in Barbados in way different, but these are just a few of my favorite places. Well, this year, Sokani Hill is back. And so you never know when you can be my get a chance to, all right. We have, we, have your we have your readers. Let's reader. make it happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> okay. Dominica is called the nature island of the Caribbean. What is Barbados called? You know what Barbados is called, Betty? Barbados is called oh, Land of the Flying Fish. Very good. Betty. Oh, nice. We are. We are the land of the flying fish. Island in the sun, the land of the flying <laughs> fish. Can you share what is Bouillon music? Um, who is your favorite Bayesian soca singer? Oh, yes. I love Bouillon. I mean, it's it's a fast paced, I think a little bit faster paced than soca. And we use a lot of traditional um, instruments to make, you know, the Jinping, which is a, a one of our cultural dances, the quadrille, the music. They make with the accordion and the conch. Something about it speaks to my soul. Some people are saying that the, sometimes the lyrics are a bit controversial, but you know, you hear that I'm across genres, um, genres no matter what. So, mm -hmm. but for me, I just love Bouillon because it's made in Dominica. It, it, it brings back the, it brings the cultural, it makes me remember my mm -hmm. like childhood days, independence days. And so I love Bouillon. For um, Barbados, my favorite, I have, I, I love so many of the old school. I have to say, first of all, Alison Hines. I learned mm. to dance thanks to Alison Hines. I couldn't dance a lick before I went to a few Alison Hines concerts. <laughs> and I watched her dancing and I would practice it. I was like, I can do it. So now, thanks to Alison Hines, I can boss a wine. <laughs> I, I love, love Alison Hines. I love her. I love her. I love um, Peter Ram. I like hyper songs. So, yes, I, I love uh, the, up, the up fast taste um soca music that they give us me same here same here like when i'm going to work on mornings as well like the upbeat music it gets me it gets me in that mood so yes. when i go into when i go into, in front of children i'm like miss why you got enough energy i'm just like yes yes because yes. they come in in the mood ready yes. energy is there yeah yes. did you taste mountain chicken growing up and what is the best way to prepare it 
Yes, growing up, I did eat plantain chicken. Um, however, nowadays, and for a few years now, it's no longer the national dish of Dominica because um, the frogs have had some kind of infection. And um, because of that, we're asked not to hunt them. Um, mm -hmm. They are endangered. Um, so the last time I probably ate mountain chicken was before I was a teenager. So that's how long mm -hmm. it was. Like, but I still remember it was really tasty. <laughs> Very tasty, stewed up and stuff. But mm -hmm. for now, we're, get, we're giving them a chance to, to recuperate and to their numbers to come back and for, for them to get back healthier. So, mm -hmm. so for now, it's Kalaloo is the national dish of Dominica. So. Oh, I don't like Kalaloo too. So that's, that's cool with me. That's cool with me. Kalaloo is fine me. with me. Yes, man. <laughs> Number five, Dominica is known for its black sand and spring. Which beach or spring should I try on my visit to your native home? Oh, this one, you want to help? Because Britain, yes. I do love, you want to help, yes. right? Yeah, which beach would yes. you recommend that Miss Karen go to, Auntie Karen go to? You go to Bubbles Beach, also known as Sophia Beach, because, because first of all, it sells pizza, chicken, ice cream, and stuff like that. Second of all, the water in the sea is, is nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Third of all, they have like a little area that's blocked off and that's warmer than than usual. It's kind of like a little hot tub or something. And oh. fifth of all, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's our favorite place. It's our favorite place in Dominica, the sulfur, the bubble beach um, in Sufria. Because the, 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 there's a, a volcano right there, so the, the, the vents come from under the sea. Oh. So it's warm and it's so very soothing and therapeutic. Um, plus, the, the owners, Dale and Carleen, they're so nice. They have the yummiest food, the yummiest drinks, the music. You have the chairs and the views. Oh, just talking about it, you know. <laughs> Stuff. Hey, I think you have so much material already for your second, but you just all write a book on, on just drink visiting Dominica. I, I'm mm -hmm. ready to go. I'm ready to have Kalalu and sit out, sit on Bubbles Beach and have the pizza. And yes. after the way how Brad described it, I'm yes. ready. I show my children are ready to uh -huh. we are ready to go to Dominica. Yeah, you should. And for the Sulphur Springs, any any of the beautiful places in Watson Waven. But you know when you're going, I'm gonna link you and I'm gonna set you up nice. But any of the springs, sulfur springs in Watton Waven, I would recommend we go to, we've been to all of them. Um, we like Die Escape because they, it's sheltered. So, because it rains a lot in Dominica. So if you, you don't want to get your hair, you know, I don't care for me, if wet is wet, I'm getting wet regardless. <laughs> but if you, if you have a, a wedding the next day or something, you don't want to mess up the hair, then you go mm -hmm. to a place where you're sheltered while you're in the hot water and you have so many options of different um, depths for the sulfur springs at, at that, that location. But nice. Yeah. So yeah, these are our, our suggestions. Okay, so that is it for Bajan Masha. When we come back, Simon says. Now last week's Simon says answer was Houston. He said blast off. That's on. Yeah, sorry about that. Simon says was blast off, cowboys, and oil tycoons. It was the first word heard on the moon. And that answer was Houston. Unfortunately, no one won that. So Houston was the first word that was heard on the moon. This week, Simon says goes, Ahoy there, matey. Sparrow is my name. And I journey to yonder shore for filming treasures galore. Who, what, where am I? Let me try again. Simon says, Ahoy there, matey. Sparrow is my name. And I journey to yonder shore for filming treasures galore. Who, what, where am I? I see Aaron and Adi, they have their hand up. You can turn on your mic and answer. A pirate. A pirate. Well, look what's on specific. I see Mackenzie and Michaela have also have their hands up. A princess. Not a princess, not a princess. I think Aaron was closest. Let me say it again. 
Uh, hi there, matey. Sparrow is my name. And I journey to yonder shore for filming treasures galore. Who, what, where am I? It was a, it was a pirate. You're getting hot. Aaron's and Addis, their hand is still up. Do you want to try again? Aaron and Addy? Yes. Go ahead. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. So, uh, Aaron, you want to praise earlier. I know you want to praise now for your brother. It was Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, if you don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean was actually filmed in Dominica. So here's a, that was a little bit, a bit of information. Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed in Dominica. So Captain Jack Sparrow came all the way to the Caribbean to film Pirates of the Caribbean. Good. Now we're going to go on break next week. But what I am going to be doing, I'm going to be going out and I'm going to be making sure that all of our winners receive their prizes. So we may not be going live next week, but we will still have some photos and some pictures and so persons. You will see our winners from over the last, I guess, eight or 10 episodes. We're going to make sure that they get all of their prizes. Now, remember, children and parents, to like, comment, and share our reading to the 246 page. Special thank you to Ms. Lawrence and Brett. You can like and follow them on Instagram at Carib Caribbean ABC. Again, thank you for joining us this week. Before we go, any words from Ms. Lawrence or Brett? No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much for having me, Karen, at the reading through the 246. It was a pleasure to read to the 246. I learned a lot as well um, from the show. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it's nice to see the young people participating and, um, I'm just encouraging them to focus on their schoolwork, read as much as possible. I think you mean just for make making sure you're focusing on reading. On reading and schoolwork, <laughs> math is important too. How is this schoolwork? No, this is good. This is reading. And I'm just encouraging them to focus on their schoolwork, their everything. On their books. Yes. Not <laughs> <laughs> Why is he fighting me? I don't know. But yes, <laughs> that's what I mean. So all the best and thank you so very much. And I'm wishing you um, all the success with the future of our Okay, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure meeting you, Brad. You have me convinced that I'm going to Dominica. I'm ready to travel. And that is it for us. Again, everyone, thanks for joining. Bye. 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 Bye.